Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. I hope you're all doing okay today and that you're ready for some more The House in Fata Morgana. Yay, story time, yes. It's kind of strange doing this uh, so late in the evening because uh, it almost feels like I'm going to read you like a bedtime story in a, in a, a way. <laughs> um, a sad, haunting, uh, perhaps traumatizing bedtime story. <laughs> you're not sure if you're ready? Okay, yeah, well... Knowing what happens, same, but uh, we'll get through it together. <laughs> Let's just hold each other's hands and... Uh, yeah, help each other through this. It will be fine. Um, so yeah... I'm very happy that I could find some time to do this, actually, because uh, I didn't want to cancel yesterday. I was uh, debating it, like, all day, but I essentially just felt that I couldn't do a good job uh, yesterday because I felt like crap. Um, my head... I had this very strange headache. It was... Um, on my left side only, and there were, were like pangs of pain, and they almost like went inside my ear even, and it hurt when I swallowed, and it was very strange, uh, very uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, I was basically just a zombie the whole day. Uh, <laughs> I I did I didn't work. I. Uh, didn't really do anything at home either. I was just dead, basically. So I'm happy to be back on my feet today. Um, still have a bit of a headache, but it's much more manageable today. Uh, and not only on my like left side, but actually like a normal headache today. <laughs> so I don't have to wonder what the heck is wrong with me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it comes from my neck, because I do have uh, neck problems a lot. Um, so yeah. But anyway, last time... Uh, what did we do last time? We uh, discovered more of... Uh, hmm. Speaking of last time, I just realized I probably have... Uh, a wrong description because I think I just copy pasted like from a, an old document and I think it says we're on door three which is wrong we're not <laughs> we're on Michelle's backstory uh, and we are uh, making our way through it uh, towards uh, the present time uh, so last time he arrived at the mansion he uh, met Morgana uh, Received a painting uh, of uh, the white-haired girl slash himself as a woman from his brother George, uh, or rather his mother, who wanted him to like remember what he is supposed to look like, um, and that just went uh, terribly wrong. He basically spiraled down in a self-hate and hatred toward the world and just so much emotions and uh, yeah, uh, he awoke the witch uh, who basically tortures him in his mind now uh, because she just wants him to be like her and curse everyone. And I think we ended with him basically turning into a cocoon just like Giselle did just to be able to handle it all. <clears throat> I'm glad you're feeling somewhat better today and I'm going to get the blankets ready for us to snuggle up on the wall we have such a delightful bedtime story. Yeah, perfect. And you also might be making food at the same time. Yeah, please do. Don't starve. <laughs> Eat. Um, have your snacks. I think that was everything that happened last time, so... Unless someone has something else they want to bring up, then I'm just gonna start the game. <clears throat> See if I remember how to do this. Feels like it was forever <laughs> since I did this. Um, and tell me if the sound is okay as well, uh, as usual. 
because uh, the sound do tend to be fickle, it seems like. <clears throat> Essentially nothing of note happened over the next two years. At one point, a man with an unusual disease stumbled across the mansion while wandering through the forest. But there is little more to be said about that. Uh, Lolly volume is good, we'll say about uh, game sound as we get more than five. Yeah, yeah. Now it's kind of low in the game because it's just crackling on fire, so tell me when the music starts. <laughs> For nothing at all could have convinced me to care about someone else. I spent much of my time sitting before the fireplace. I had covered the stained glass window with drapes, loath to even think about that damned archangel. Staring at the dancing flames, I was able to forget the passage of time, watching, unblinking, as the red and orange tongues flicked back and forth. They seemed to spread outward from the fireplace, consuming me. Whether by the raging infernos of hell, or the cleansing fires of purgatory, the thought of being swallowed up and burned to ashes by a massive conflagration was quite pleasant. But those visions never became reality. Tell me, Michelle, what are you thinking right now? Do you still not want to curse them? Look at yourself, Michelle. Look at how you're living. Do you really want this life? Have you ever thought about dying? Michelle? Would you like to die? <laughs> That's the right answer. God has said that taking one's own life is a sin after all. That's good, Michelle. You made the right decision. And I shall be there with you until the very end, my dear friend. Honestly, part of me did desire death. I just didn't have enough energy to take my own life. My mind and spirit were too far decayed. Poor Michelle. However, in my tenth year, the door opened once more, and time spotted back into motion. When you showed up, Giselle, everything I had given up on, and everything I had thought I'd lost, it all came back. At first, as you know quite well, I was deeply mistrustful of you. I hated having you around. But if I didn't met you, but if I hadn't met you, in all likelihood, I probably would have continued down that path and become a demon. But you seem to me like a rather handsome man. I think I get what you're trying to say, but my mental image of a witch is definitely more a woman. So you're not a witch? To tell you the truth, I didn't know who might be here, which had me rather scared. But I think I can make this work. It's a pleasure to meet you, Master. I have missed her so much. Oh my goodness. I almost started crying just by the sight of her. My god. After taking care of Giselle, I returned to my room. Yeah, she is precious, I agree. Yeah. She is very jolly. She, she is the opposite of Michelle in so many ways, and he, he, she is exactly what he needs. I was, to be quite honest, dumbfounded. And it was, naturally, the witch who stoked the fire on my apprehension. Why would you let that woman stay here? She came from the Bollinger estate, and we both know how you feel about your family. Chase her out. Give her a little scare and she'll be gone within the day. If you'd rather not, I could always frighten her in your place. 
a rattling window here, a couple broken glasses there. Small things like that to accentuate the eerie atmosphere. Are you going to say anything? Why do you care about her at all? Oh now, don't be like that. I live here too, so why shouldn't I care? And I am, and I am not fond of noisy people. Or sprightly women like that one. That's something we can both agree on, isn't it? You don't like that woman, do you? The more a person smiles, the less you can trust them. Though I hardly have to tell you that, do I? Stop talking. Now, now, that's not very polite. This is my... This is a family matter. It is none of your concern. I was merely offering to help rid you of a pest. I don't need your help. I will get rid of that woman when I'm ready. But first, I will find out what secrets she's keeping. Then I will go back to living in peace. <laughs> Very well then. <clears throat> Morgana seems a bit jealous that Michelle gives Giselle more attention. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Agreed. That pest has no place in your sweet solitude. The world before you now is m so much kinder, so much warmer than the one you used to know. Well, good luck then. And if you need a helping hand, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, and by the way, what now? You've changed, my dear. <laughs> And I like you so much better like this. I always hated how much you reeked of human. You were blessed with a body like unto God. You were personally created by his hands. I could only dream of having what you have. But you only wanted to deny it. Now though, you act the part much better. A saint, resurrected by the closest living thing to God. Perhaps this too could be considered a miracle. <laughs> Morgana. Yes? You are a deranged delusional woman. Why thank you! Giselle was a woman who smiled a great deal. Her jade eyes seemed to glimmer every time she made a new face. And the more she smiled, the more vibrantly she spoke, the more suspicious I became. I couldn't trust someone who smiled that much, especially not a woman. And the way she kept trying to get friendly with me didn't help that impression at all. I had a hard time believing she honestly wanted to get to know me. I couldn't help but think she was trying to fish for information. Anyone who tried to get close to me had to have some ulterior motive, like Amy, who had only done so to satisfy her mother. Perhaps my mistrust could have been considered paranoia. But even ten years later, flashes of that nightmare would still come back to me from time to time. It would take more than a few attempts at being nice for me to trust this stranger. <clears throat> Eventually, I came to the realization that she was hiding something and I convinced myself it was out of guilt. So I wrote Mother, in search of something I could use to tear her down, to get her out of here. I should have listened to Giselle, rather than Mother or the Witch. But I had conflated her with Amy in my mind, so I was unable to see where the truth really lay. I was only able to perceive her as, perceive her as malicious. So instead of her, I put my faith in Mother's words, despite Mother never once doing the same for me. My beloved daughter Michelle, I deeply regret having to put you in this situation. I never wanted to let that woman get anywhere near you. She's a witch. A terrible, sinful witch. A dreadful, tainted woman. She... lay with my husband. With your father. 
She's a lowly merchant girl who wormed her way into our family so she could exploit your father for money. She committed a grievous sin, the sin of adultery. I tried to have her executed, but your father wouldn't allow it. So instead, he had her banished to atone for her sins, unaware that you already lived there. And I could not tell him either, but that is mine and your brother's secret. I pray you can find it in your heart to forgive your mother for her failings. Forgive me for delivering a witch to you. I would not be dis I would not be surprised if she tried snooping around. She's a ruthless fiend who will do anything for money. Should word of your curse happen spread, it would surely draw unwanted attention from the church. We have no allies except each other. Michelle, with this letter, I have included a knife. The blade has been blessed with holy water. We should allow it to eradicate the corrupt, evil soul of the witch. I ask of you, with all my heart, to send that awful creature back to hell. It was storming that night. Erratic claps of thunder ripping through the sky. She sailed out a panicked scream, shoving me back. And the look in her eyes kicked into motion the emotions I had thought I'd lost. <clears throat> the most trustful of women, somehow even less truthful than Amy. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely lovely. I knew that face. I knew that scream. Because... That face had once been mine. I had screamed with that same utter despair at the world. Back to the way things were. Yes, finally. It's quiet again. I'm honestly surprised she stayed as long as she did. In a way, her tenacity is rather impressive. Not many would persist for so long in the face of such obvious disinterest. But you know, no one would try to get friendly with you without good reason. Information about your care is considerable... Oh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Information about your, you carries considerable weight outside these walls. But the look on her face then... Was that really her just putting on an act because I revealed her scheming? If you think she was afraid of you, you're mistaken. That's how people behave when their sins are brought to light. She was screaming though. And she looked genuinely terrified when she knocked my hand away. You're not going to let a woman's screams cloud your judgement, are you? A woman can make a weapon out of anything. Tears, a smile, fear. The day she arrived, you recognize her smile as fake. So surely you aren't going to fall for this. I'm not falling for anything. I just... I feel like I know that frenzied panic. Something doesn't add up. Just nothing, my dear. In fact, what perplexes me is why you didn't simply kill her when you had the chance. Are you afraid of the sight of blood? The blood of your tormentors had no more worth uh, than that of a wild boar. You should have sliced her throat without a second thought. Although, I suppose that would have made quite a mess. Now that makes more sense. You were not afraid of hurting her. You merely didn't want the burden of having to clean up af afterward. How very like you. Be quiet. Oh come now. That woman's finally gone and it's back to just the two of us. And you don't want to talk? Silence, please. <laughs> As you wish. I will celebrate your accomplishment in silence, my dearest friend. I imagine she's out there, half buried in the cold earth by now. I get chills every time I consider where I would be if I had done as Mother said. If I had killed you, or if, out there in the forest, you had succumbed to the unforgiving weather. Life had never given me much in the way of a good fortune, but you coming back, 
you being alive was absolutely a blessing. I'm done! I can't take it! I'm through with this whole world! You don't have any idea what I went through there! How hard it was just to keep myself together! Giselle, I do understand. I know very well how difficult, how painful it can be. For no one to believe you, for no one to accept you, I know far too well what it's like to want to scream that you're done with this whole damn world. I truly do. That day, for the first time, we saw past the surface. We got to know each other as people. It was nothing more than a single small step, but for us, it was like we had moved a mountain. I still remember how the light felt, as it shone through the windows we opened together. It didn't burn. And while this might sound melodramatic, I feel safe in saying it was probably the gentlest light I had ever felt in my life. Following my reconciliation with Giselle, I started turning back into my old self. Well, I suppose that's not quite correct. I felt a comfort and peace with myself that I had never had before. That may have been the first time I was really human. Having someone else around began to feel normal. It was something I was certain I would never have. It was incredible. Though, to someone else, our time together may have seemed frivolous and empty. Our conversations meaningless shatter. I never thought the day would come when someone would laugh at something I said, when someone would smile at the sight of me. However trivial, seeing Giselle smile made me happy. Pretty sure I have a small cold. Aww, I'm sorry to hear that, Fia. You, you are in the wrong line of work. <laughs> Not trying to shame you or anything, but uh, those little demons you're working with are dangerous. I hope you get better soon. And I hope you get better till Saturday when we are going to do door. Oh darn it! Where'd you get off to? Are you here? Are you in the vase? What's all the racket? Is something the matter? Ah, oh, master! Yes, um, a cat. Huh? A cat? <laughs> what? Have, have you have you missed that? We're going away this Saturday. <laughs> we booked it like forever ago. <clears throat> a naughty little cat's been sneaking into the cellar the past few days, so I'm trying to catch him. If you happen to come across him, don't let him get away. Right. And what will you do once you caught him? Well, hmm... I don't want to punish him. That would be mean. If he insists on coming back, I think I'll take him in and teach him how to be a house cat. Y you mean to keep him? Are you not a fan of cats, master? I don't... mind them, no. Then there you have it. I hope it doesn't take too long to warm up to us. Maybe it'll help if you give him, a, give him a name. Oh, a name! That's a great idea! What should we call him then? You decide, master. <laughs> At least you don't have any other plans? That's good. <laughs> so get better then. You, you want me to pick a name? This is your house after all. So it's only right you would be the one to choose. I'm not sure I follow that reasoning. What does the cat look like? Mm, well, he's wild, so he's dirty, I guess. And he's kind of got some spots here and there. Is he ugly? 
Oh my god. <laughs> you know where this is going, guys, right? <laughs> um, I'd say so, yeah. Alright then. Agnes Pickens Mark II. Never let Michelle <laughs> name cats. <laughs> Got to censor that, yeah. <clears throat> that is the censor word, though. <laughs> what are we gonna do about it? That's a name? Why on earth would you want to call something that? And what does Mark II even mean? Be quiet. It's on you if he runs away, master. <clears throat> My town with sell made a normal person out of me. Being able to tell stupid jokes, to get frustrated and surprised and exasperated. I started showing actual emotion. Our silly, meaningless banter became something precious. My heart of stone began to soften. The world she created for me was what I had yearned for my whole life. Having lost half of it imprisoned and spent the other half playing an identity that conflicted with how I felt in my heart, it was the first time I genuinely felt like I was allowed to be myself. Yeesh, you're not a kid, so don't be so picky. It's not good for you. You make a mockery of the culinary arts! I've heard quite enough, Master. It sounds like I'm going to need to put your taste buds through some intense rehabilitation. How about this, Master? Play a game against me. And of course, if you're open to it, it doesn't have to end there. We can continue to getting to know each other for, for years to come. Giselle, though I did my best to not show it, I think that I treasured our time together even more than you did. I latched onto it, desperately re refusing to let go. I needed it, and I needed you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be funny if it were just the original Ugly Speckles. It just followed Michelle to the mansion. Are you listening, Morgana? I can hear you just fine, my dear. Now, what brings you all the way up here? You know you can call for me anywhere in the house. My bonds to this tower have been broken. This is a conversation. We can only have here, the place where we first met. It's time for us to part ways. My desires haven't changed since our first encounter. I wish to be a person. To be a man? Exactly. When I'm with Giselle, I am that. She makes me into the person I always wanted to be. And now you wish to be rid of me, so you can complete your descent into, into the realm of the unclean? I do. <laughs> you came all the way up here just to tell me that. A needless formality. I'm sorry, Michelle, but we are kindred spirits, as much as you may want to deny it. You could be second to only God, yet you spurn his gift. I am nothing like you. I am a human. Nothing more. I shall not condemn you for your unyielding resolve, but rather pity you for being so utterly blind. Allow me to make a prediction before I depart, Michelle, cursed namesake of an archangel. You may think that you are making some sort of progress, but the fact of the matter is, you've gone nowhere. Will that smile of yourselves be able to withstand your secret? 
You know better than anyone that no one can accept what you are, not even her. You will never be with anyone. I understand that. No, Michelle, you don't understand. But you will soon enough. What you have now is not true happiness. It's empty. Not but a masquerade. And when the night is over, the mask will come off. So what if it isn't permanent? Isn't it... So what... <clears throat> so what if it isn't permanent? Isn't it real? Does being ephemeral make it worthless? Why can I not want something that doesn't last forever? This is the first time I've ever found joy in life. Those moments of happiness only serve to worsen the loss. Sweeter the honey, the more you despair when the pot runs dry. Sooner or later you will return to me, begging for my help. And I have every intention of giving it to you. I will not hold this over you either. For when you come to me, it will be in the time of your utmost despair. And when your little paradise finally comes crumbling down, you will become what I am. So I will take my leave from, the, from your side, in anticipation of that day. Until we meet again, my dear. I must say that I really do like their relationship. It's very complicated, but I feel like Morgana isn't all like evil or anything. She's very twisted, but I do feel like she actually cares for Michelle. Oh, hello, Master. I was just looking for you. I heated up some wine. I thought you might... Is something the matter? No. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, 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 no, it's nothing. All I did was warm it over the fire. Are you sure nothing's the matter? I shouldn't be hearing the witch's voice anymore. So yes, I am fine. Oh, wow! That's... that's wonderful news, Master. It is. Giselle seemed quite relieved when I informed her that the witch would no longer be bothering me. I knew she didn't believe in the witch, but that wasn't what mattered. What did matter was that, despite likely questioning my sanity when I had first told her about it, she hadn't tried to pull away. She treated me the same as before. She never stopped smiling. And that meant so much more than whether or not she believed in the witch. With Morgana's voice no longer constantly in my ears, my life started to feel like some approximation of normal. In fact, I would say I was probably happier than most. Nevertheless, I intended to keep a certain degree of distance between us, for what the witch had said rang truer than I wanted to admit. You will never be with anyone. Having been born into this body, that was my reality, and there was nothing I could do to change it. I had come to accept that. Or so I thought. I wasn't going to covet I could, what I couldn't have. But I had gotten a taste of, the, of that sweet happiness. I had started to develop a great affection for that smile. And as much as I tried to tell myself I was just getting caught up in the moment that the feeling would pass in time... I found myself unable to restrain the swelling of emotions within me. That day by the fireplace, I thought that all I wanted from you was friendship. To have you in my life, always nearby. I thought that if we were simply friends, I would still be able to see that smile, even if you were le weren't to learn what I was. That if we were merely friends, you would be able to accept that. So we keep these things I felt inside, at all costs. However, with each passing day, with each gentle smile, my affection for you swelled. It reached a point where, as hard as I tried to keep it contained, 
All it would take was the slightest nudge for it to come spilling out. And it made me desire what was out of reach. I was convinced I had changed. Because this happiness had become my everyday. I had no right to any such thing. But I came to wish that I could be the center of your life. I yearned for you. And I wanted you to yearn for me. And like the fool I am, I thought that with you, it might even be possible. Morgana twists an eventual of bittersweetly kind with her cruel half truths. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I agree with that. She is very complicated. <laughs> Honestly, it's no trouble. I mean it. You just took me by surprise, that's all. I am pleased. It doesn't matter how it turns out. You drew it for me, master. Whether it's good or bad is irrelevant. I would... I would be happy with anything drawn for me by the man I love. That one word set me into motion. For I had long since fallen deeply, utterly in love with you. And there was no escaping that. L listen! Listen very carefully! I... I... I love... I love you! I love you so much I feel like my heart is going to explode! Nevertheless, there was also no escape in my past, what I was, knowing I could never truly be with you, that I could do nothing about this body, I pushed you away, but seeing all that color drain from your face, I knew I had to take that step, I thought that maybe you could change my world, if you really did love me as much as you said, together, we could change everything. We could walk a new path, side by side. And so, I decided to trust my heart. <laughs> I'm in heaven! Ah, uh, I'm so happy I could cry! I too was elated. Giselle, I am sure you thought I was a kind-hearted man, that my love for you was pure and chaste. And I wanted to be that for you, but beneath the surface lurked indecent desires. Despite saying I didn't want to hurt you, that just having you by my side was enough, my desire bubbled up at the warmth of your skin. I wanted to let that heat take over, to let my hands run free. I could feel it burning inside me. I longed for intimacy. Not just emotionally, but physically. I wished I could lay you down on my bed and satisfy, satisfy those desires. I wanted to make love to you. Unfortunately, that was not possible. I didn't have the ability. No matter how hard I try, my body lacks the capability to be one with you. I can pray, and I can long, and I can wish all I want, but my body would never be what I wanted to be. I am grey. Though I have always known my true colour, I have no way of becoming it. My heart has always known what I am, but the world refuses to accept it. Every time I claim I'm normal, five say I'm an abomination. Would it really have been too much to ask for me to, be, for me to have been born normal? To let me be who I truly am? Is that really so much to ask? Things began to change when I learned my father Anthony had passed away. George would, I assumed, be busy preparing to take his place. And if what he had said was true, then I would be welcomed back to the estate. 
I would no longer be a demon child, but a member of the Bollinger family once more. Deep down though, I couldn't completely believe it would actually happen. After 11 years in exile, I had no idea how they felt about me anymore. Would they even remember a promise they had made so long ago? Poor Michelle. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly lacks imagination. Yeah, I mean, it's... I guess it's because uh, it's a different time period, I guess. So he, And also, he's not very knowledgeable because he didn't even, like truly know the difference between man and female uh, like or man and female well uh, man or woman <laughs> uh, because yeah he, he didn't really, really understand what it was that made him different uh, before he stripped down that poor servant naked so yeah <laughs> He, he, he I agree he does lack some imagination in that part um, Probably not his fault, but yeah. <clears throat> fear that they wouldn't, uh, fear that they wouldn't threaten to consume me. But Giselle, as she often seemed to do, put my mind at ease. No matter where I go, you will be there with me, Michelle. It's true, I am nervous not knowing what the future holds. But not in a scared something bad might happen kind of way. <clears throat> That's a sample of one, uh, though. Maybe the servant was just strange. <laughs> yeah, it's the servant that was strange. It's Michelle that is normal. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's not his fault, but uh, an easy tease. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Michelle is very easy to tease. It's more of a jittery, excited anxiousness. I'm confident the two of us can overcome anything, no matter what obstacles may come our way. Together, we can create an even more wonderful future. Could I believe her? Could I have faith in her wonderful future? That she would always be there with me? That we would return to this state and finally move on with our lives? That together, we could create a future? No, that wasn't a question. I wanted to have faith. I wanted to believe as much as she did. I wanted to believe that, even if I was grey, I could have a normal life together with her. She had rescued me from the depths of hell. And now, I wanted to make her happy. After taking that step in our relationship, I made numerous attempts to reveal the truth about what I was. But every time I tried, sharp pain gripped my chest and my words faded into nothing before they could reach my lips. I knew that if our relationship were to continue, I would have to tell her eventually, but merely imagining her face twisted in disgust nearly crushed me. She was everything to me. And so, as we prepared for our departure, I decided it was time to make some changes. It was time for me to break out of my rut. And what happened next depended largely on whether mother and my brothers were willing to accept me as a man. The course of my future, t the course my future took was in their hands. In their hearts. If they couldn't accept me, then I couldn't return home. I prayed, from the bottom of my heart, that things would turn out for the best. That my family would accept me for who I was and that I would accept what I had with Giselle. I decided I would tell Giselle everything after I received her responses, and I hoped dearly that she would join me wherever I ended up. I couldn't provide Giselle the same kind of happiness a normal man could, but if she and my family accepted me, I would do anything I could to build a happy family with her in my own way. And so, I sat down to write. Dear Mother, there is something I wish to tell you, something that means a great deal to me. So I ask of you, please hear me out, and I ask of you, please accept it. Mother, I no longer bear any resentment for, the pre for my present lot in life. Nevertheless, 
I would ask of you to concede one thing. That I was never cursed. That I was always your son. That I am Michelle, not Michelle. I have found someone whom I care for dearly. A woman. And I love her with all my heart. I would like to spend the rest of my life with her. I do not wish for much. Simply to have a quiet life with her. To go through our days together, man and woman. That is the one thing I want. Mother, I know you are aware that my body is no longer female. I am a man. My heart is male. And I ask of you to please accept that. I have no grudge with you. In fact, I am incredibly grateful to you for bringing me into this world. With love, your dearest son. But rather than a reply, I received a visit from Knight's order to kill me. That's a response in its own right, I guess. <sighs> Michelle, t tell me, why do you think this is your fault? What is your curse? Uh, your curse? It isn't just the color of your hair and eyes, is it? There's more to it, isn't there? There's something else, isn't there? Can you hear me, Morgana? Morgana! Please say something! <laughs> That's how you usually respond to text. <laughs> yeah, Michelle's mother is not evil, she's just an introvert. <laughs> Morgana! Your predictions, they were right. I was a fool and you can laugh at me all you want. So please, say something. Death. Death to the unholy one. Death to the heretic. Death to the witch. <sighs> Why won't you answer me, Morgana? Why can I not feel you there beside me? You said you would help me when I came for it. Well, here I am, begging for your help. Please, come back to me just this once. I know you're there somewhere. Please, before they break down the door. M Michelle? I... I'm... I'm all right. It's okay, Michelle. I, I I'm not scared. Y you're here with me after all. I'm fine. It's all fine. So please hold me until it's all over. Please stay with me. Michelle, my dear, why would you ever believe that fairy tale nonsense? Why would you ever think a wonderful future awaited you? <laughs> so when should I expect my nightly visit for pestering your deities? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, Dudor. When are you gonna send knights after us? <laughs> Morgana. Here you are now, wretched, pitiful. Hi, Elrin, welcome! For that you have my sympathy. I will help you in your time of need. Ah, finally you speak. Michelle? I can feel the despair emanating from you. You hate it. It kills you. This is how you're rewarded. For fighting to be yourself. You know exactly who sent those knights, don't you? They rejected you. Rejected what you are. Hey, Michelle? Are you alright? Your family, unable to accept your body and heart, branded you a heretic and turned you over to the church. Yes, they did. And did you hear what the knights were saying? They've even accused you of being a witch, taking my sins and placed them on you. Come back to me, Michelle. You hate them, don't you? You want to curse them, don't you? 
You want to kill them, don't you? I shall grant you that wish. Out of your hatred and despair, I shall make my own wish. And that wish shall become a curse upon your family's wicked souls. You'll grant my wish then, Morgana? Yes, yes, absolutely. Tell me what it is you want, my poor little darling. Michelle! Let your contempt flow free. Give me the names of those you want to curse. I want you to protect her. Excuse me? If they find her, she could be accused of abetting, uh, abetting a witch and executed as well. So please, use your power to keep her safe. You said you would grant my wish, did you not? That was not the wish I was hoping for. I know, but that's the wish I want you to grant. Morgana! Then offer me something in return. Such a disappointing wish would require a sacrifice. Step beyond that door, my dear, and witness ultimate despair. That was my plan anyway. So long as I am considered a heretic and marked for death, my being alive puts Giselle in danger. Indeed it does. Yet here you are, shaking like a scared little child. Of course I'm scared. There isn't a single person who doesn't fear death. Please keep her safe. You're the only one who can help me, Morgana. You have my word. From this moment I vow to protect her life. Thank you. Giselle. Please hear me out, Giselle. I never thought anything good would become in my life. I never thought I would find anyone who truly understood me, who, tru who would be happy to have my love. And for that, I hated the world. I was in constant torment, living in the shadows. But then, a single ray of light shone down on me. Michelle! Jew, Giselle. You delivered me from the darkness. I'm scared, Giselle. I'm terrified. I used to think my life was meaningless, that it didn't matter if I lived or died. But now, I can't stop shaking. That's perfectly normal. I'm scared to death too, but... But what scares me most is losing you. M Michelle! So please, allow me to repay you. I said I would do anything for you, so let me do this. I haven't given you anything. I haven't done anything for you. So give me one final chance. Michelle! What? What are you doing? Get back in here, Michelle! What? Why? The door! I can't open it! Michelle! Michelle! What did you do to the door? Come on, get back in here! I guess you really can perform miracles, Morgana. I... I don't want to lose you either! I know that, by doing this, I will bring you pain, Giselle. But I can't make you happy, no matter how hard I try. And I realize that now. Say something, Michelle! You're out there, aren't you? Please! Please don't do anything rash! They're going to kill you if you're out there! Giselle... The witch told me... What? That she would ensure your safety. Michelle... She... She isn't real! There is no witch talking to you! It's all in your head! A figment of your imagination created to alleviate your loneliness! Rest assured, she does not lie. Michelle! I pray that someday she will be able to get past this, to move on with life. She needs to know that that's what I want. I have... I have to find the right words. Ah, I'm pathetic. My voice is so shaky. Please listen. You are a wonderful woman, Giselle. Spirited, true to yourself, deeply sympathetic. You are not to blame, 
for how difficult your life has been. Most of the fault lies with me. And a bit of bad fortune. Yeah. Poor precious beans. That's the precise right words for this. The, yeah. It hurts. <laughs> but that's all behind you now. Once this is over, you can start anew. What are you talking about? S so survive. Live a good, fulfilling life. Move past this. Live your life. And always love your family. I know you can do it. That is my wish for you. N no, I don't. I don't want that. I want to be with you. No one else but you. I don't want to let you die. There it is. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Get, get back in here, Michelle. Open the door. If my choice is to live on without you, I'd rather... Your scars will heal. You'll find a nice man and have a wonderful family. Why? Because you... You have a good family. You have a mother and a sister who love you. If you were to be executed here with me, you would be marked a heretic as well. And your family would be condemned. I don't want anyone else to suffer that kind of disgrace. But I can't tell you any of that. Because I don't want you looking into why I'm a heretic. So this is where we part ways, Giselle. Thank you, Giselle, for bringing light into my world. Don't say that! The year we shared together, and the months since our relationship blossomed, have been the brightest days of my life. But if... If there is a next life, I hope you don't mind if I pray that we're able to meet again. And this time, that we can find each other once more, in another world, in a body that better suits me. Michelle! Michelle. I had thought I was prepared, that I was doing something good, something I could be proud of, that I would give my life for her with head held high. But it wasn't long before I realized what the witch had meant, what she had warned me about, when she had said ultimate despair waited beyond this door. It is our holy duty as knights of the church to deliver punishment unto the heathen who made a pact with the devil. You are sentenced to death, your body to be hanged upon the cross for three days and three nights when your unholy flesh shall be pu purified by the fires of heaven. Why? What are you doing here? I stared up at the night, eyes wide, for the voice from within the helm belong to my elder brother. You shall now be executed. <sighs> Do you have any final words? I knew well enough that mother was not in her right mind, and while her refusal to accept me had hurt, at the same time I had somewhat accepted it. Ex uh, expected it. I, I know how to read. It made sense to me. In her madness, Mother had declared me a heretic and reported me to the church. But this... But Didier... Didier... <clears throat> I wonder if Morgana had purposely influenced Michelle's reconstruction to be as Michelle? Yeah, we will see. Answers will uh, come in, the me in, in due time. <laughs> Men wield swords and fight against the dangerous enemies, and they do so to protect the weak, women and children. I'm here to protect you and your mother. What are you doing here? Why are you pointing your sword at me? Are you smiling behind that cold steel helm, frowning, or staring ex expressionlessly? Though your transformation was too much for mother and father to accept, 
With enough time, everything will go back to the way it was before, just like it did for myself and George. None of this is your fault. It was all unfortunate timing. You said that it would all go back to normal eventually. Can I trust that even if the whole world says I'm cursed, that you'll always be on my side? That you'll always be my brothers? Can I put my trust in you once more? Didier? Yorch? You absolutely can, Michelle. I swear to God on high. Yeah, this this is definitely more heartbreaking. Like, this part gets played up so many times and it hurts more and more every time we see it. It's so well written and it's so painful. Did your vow have any meaning at all? I spent years here in this dark house, waiting, believing you would come through for me. So why? Why are you standing there a half dozen nights at your back, saying I am to be executed? Why? De dear. Ugh. Do not cry. Don't you dare cry, Michelle. You're standing here in front of this door as a man protecting the woman he loves. So you mustn't cry. Who? Who is it you're sentencing to death? Michelle Bollinger or a demon child, naturally. Or a witch, perhaps. But why? If I'm not an angel sent from heaven or a demon child, then what am I? What on earth am I? What are you? You're... You're... A Bollinger. You are a family. And that's all there is to it. I thought... We were brothers. Our familiar bonds have long since been severed, cursed witch. Ah. Now I see Giselle. This world. Never had a place for me. I was never welcome here. Kill him! <coughs> so many blades pierce my flesh. Didier's sword in my chest, lances in my arms and shoulders, arrows in both of my legs. I could hardly even tell what hurt anymore. But the pain from within was much clearer. My heart cracked audibly before shattering completely. Don't cry. Do not cry. Tears would only make me more pitiful. So don't you cry, Michelle. Don't cry. I'm crying here. <laughs> Oof. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a moment. <laughs> ah. This hurts. This this hurts. Just the image. It's so close to my face, and it hurts. Uh. <sighs> <clears throat> I believed in you. De de year. Thank you, Quill. Thank you. <laughs> I'm okay, I think, but yeah, th this very it hurts. <laughs> Didier, when I was younger, I idolized you. Those broad shoulders, muscular arms, gentle eyes. 
Everything you said. Your simple but pure desire to become a knight. I thought, if I could be like you, then I could be proud of who I was. Though that may have faded somewhat after being locked away for so long, my adoration for you never went away. I thought you of everyone would accept me for who I am. And I thought you would celebrate my relationship with Giselle. That you would put those big hands on my shoulders, a smile on your face, and say, I'm happy for you. That you would welcome her into the family. That we could go on outings together on cloudy days. And maybe she could make something for us. She's a pretty good cook after all. George would rifle through the basket before lunch. And Didier would scold him. I would be there watching, a proud smile on my face. As unlikely, as adoracious as I knew it was. I still dreamed of a life like that. I had the faintest hope that when we saw each other again, that dream might, might come true, Didier. I put my faith in you. I love this game, but I also hate it. <laughs> oh. <sighs> and so, my life came to an end. But that wasn't the end of the story. I don't know if what comes next could be called my story. But memories of these events linger in my soul. After being pierced by Didier's blade, I found myself looking down upon my own corpse. How could I have ever imagined that I would be made to witness my own misery even in death? I watched as my eldest brother dragged me to the place of my crucifixion, and my soul, evidently still bound to my flesh, was dragged along with it, against my will, down to the nearby village. The knights! The knights have returned from the holy quest! Oh, how we have awaited your arrival! How glorious it, it is to see you! Waiting for us there was a cluster of villagers. A large cross lay on the ground in the center of the square. Holding torches that formed a crowd around the knights, several of them familiar faces. The men who had come to ransack the mansion were standing there, staring at my body in awe. Ah, the Lord's judgment had been delivered unto the Witch of the Cursed Mansion by his holy servants. <clears throat> the best cannot is the ones that uh, makes us care for it so dearly that it breaks our heart. Yeah, agreed. Very much agreed. That's why I love this story so much, because even knowing what happens, it can move me this much that I even start crying. So, yeah, I absolutely adore this story. It's amazing. No longer shall we live in fear of the curse befalling us. Eternal peace is assured. We have assembled all the tools you need to execute a divine mission. A cross befitting of such heinous sinner. That wish threatened to curse us. Solid our pure ears with its blasphemy. I had done no such thing. I hadn't cursed anyone. I had merely been defending myself. They had been armed and outnumbered me. So I said what was necessary to chase them off. Our poor harvest and our suffering at the hands of the greedy lord were all the work of the witch. Why then? Were they acting like I was at fault? Why was I the sinner? And why did I need to be judged? My soul trembled at the overwhelming fervor consuming the crowd. Their zealous desire to see judgment cast. So I prayed. I asked God to grant me the smallest of miracles. To let my voice reach my brother who carried my body. Please don't do this, Didier. Please hear my voice. You know me better than that. You know I've done nothing wrong. Those men smirking at the sight of my body. They're the ones putting the blame for their sins on me. Please, tell me you at least don't think I did those things. Don't put me on that cross. 
If it was Mother who sold me out to the church, then surely you can give me a respectable burial. The nades and rope for the crucifixions are here. We would have you, all night, deliver the Lord's judgment unto this vile witch. Didier, why do you say nothing? Why do you accept the tools this man presents you? Tools meant to punish me. Tell me, Didier. Crucifixion! Crucify it! Crucify the witch! My brother lowered my corpse to the ground and began removing my clothing. And in that very moment, I realized the purpose of hanging someone from a cross. Overwhelmed by hopelessness, tears streamed down my face. Please, anything but that. I'm begging you. Don't expose me to these people. Don't expose my body, Didier. I'm begging you. Don't do it. But of course, my voice had no way of reaching him. And he proceeded to remove my clothing, piece by piece until I was left fully nude. For a brief moment, an unpleasant silence spread through the crowd. The erratic crack crackling of their torches was the only sound that could be heard in the square. And then, with a mocking laugh, one man spoke. Ah, so there it is, the devilish creature. Ah, ah, ah! D don't look at me, please, look away! Or just get it over with, and burn me now. Burn my body, please. One simple thing was all I was missing. I had a frame like a man. I lacked breasts of a woman. My heart was male. I was in love with a woman. You sold your soul to the devil, and this is what you became. This frightful, reprehensible creature. To dare defile the sacred body God blessed you with. Was that what people really thought of me? Was there no way to make them understand? Could they not possibly imagine how miserable it was to live in a body that didn't fit the shape of your soul? Was there no way to get through to them, even the slightest bit, that all I wanted was to be, be what I felt I was? Was that really so heinous a crime? Please, dear dear, stop this! Don't humiliate me any further. Please, just... Let me depart this world in peace. Carry my body away from this place. That's all I ask. And if you can't do that, then at least burn me instead. Didier. Didier. He then placed my body upon the cross, bound my arms together at the wrist with rope, and then drove a nail through my palms. I couldn't look away. I tried to close my eyes, but I couldn't. My vision remained perfectly clear despite the constant stream of tears. When he was finished attaching my body to the cross, he and several other knights lifted it off the ground, planting it in the center of the village square. The villagers showered the knights with their praise and gratitude. Not for lack of trying, I was unable to get away from the cross. My soul was trapped there along with my body. Didier didn't say a word the entire time. After a full day hanging there, grotesque black, blackish splotches began appearing on my lover body. Everyone who saw it grimaced, grimaced in disgust. The knights, Didier included, had long since taken a leave, leaving my soul behind, curled up at the base of the cross. A constant stream of tears ran down my face. Despite all my prayers, I remained bound to that place, left to rot and on the cross with my body. Passersby threw rocks or spat on me. Children laughed. A mother warned her daughter to always obey God's teachings. By 48 hours, black feathered birds and maggots had appeared to devour my rotting flesh. I couldn't imagine any less pleasant a sight than my than my own body decaying in the sunlight, exposed for all to see. A group of children assembled in the square not far from the cross, and soon after, a competition began to see who could take down the evil witch. They gathered all the rocks they could find and started throwing them at my corpse as hard as they could. The stones ripped through my de decomposing flesh, exposing bits of bone. Eventually, they set it on a winner, 
the one who had torn off the most flesh, and went on the way. And when they were gone, the birds flocked in to take their place. The third day and night came and went, and at sunrise on the fourth day I received a visitor. Watch your step, madam. The crucifix is this way. After everything I had been through, I thought nothing more uh, could possibly affect me. I had sunk as far down into the abyss as I would go. However... Mother. I knew it was her instantly. She was older and bonier than I remembered. She had bags under her eyes so dark they looked like bruises. Her once lustrous blonde hair had faded almost white. But I would always recognize my own mother. What are you... doing here, mother? Father. In the thirteen years I had last, since I had last heard mother's voice, it had grown raspy and weak. But there were still a distinct traces in it of the woman who had raised me, who had stayed at my bedside when I was sick. Though I lacked a physical body, I still felt a deep, piercing chill at the sound of her voice. Father, this is not my daughter. I did not birth this accursed thing. No, 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 I am her victim. For years I suffered at the hands of this witch. She stole my daughter away from me, tormenting me, endlessly tormenting me, trying to ruin me. A demon. You're a demon. Mother. I... I despise you, you foul, hellish monster. I... I loved you. You took everything from me. I could never bring myself to hate my birth mother. I feel nothing but a revulsion for you. I loved you. An eternity in the fires of hell would be too good for you. I often disagreed with the things you said and did. But I still remember the feeling of your hand in mine as I lay sick in bed. I have absolutely no relation to this demon. I kept writing you letters, kept pretending to be a girl for you, because I didn't want to hurt you. This is not my daughter! I couldn't stand doing it. Whenever I sat down to write one, I came out a horrible wreck, even worse off than before. But even so... Send this monster straight to hell! I didn't want... to break you, mother. I didn't want to push you any further off the edge. Quickly! Set me free of this accursed thing! But I suppose... I still did end up breaking you. Please, be at ease, madam. The Lord has heard your prayers. He wants you to cast a demon into the cleansing fires. He wants you to show him that, as you say, you have no relation to this unholy thrall. Gladly! Gladly! I'll gladly send this vile creature to the deepest pits of hell with my own two hands. Her eyes swirling with every hateful emotion imaginable, Mother took the torch from the priest and tossed it into the pile of straw spread around the base of the cross. The flame crackled as it spread upward, consuming my body and filling the square with, its, with the putrid stench of burning flesh. Through the cloud of smoke, I could see a faint smile on Mother's lips. Mother... I'm so sorry. You had to give birth to me. When the inferno had devoured everything and the cross itself came crumbling down, my soul was finally released from that place. Or rather, I suppose it more shattered. Yeah, poor Michelle, so broken down. Should, yeah, <laughs> should really disown her too, yeah. But I mean, it's hard because I can understand where he's coming from, like... In, in a way, we would always love our parents, no matter what they do. It's very hard, I think, for a child to act actively start hating a parent, I feel like. Um, perhaps uh, that's not always healthy, um, but I think that's how it is. The things I saw... 
The things I was made to watch were harrowing. Morgana had been right. The anguish that came after knowing happiness was much, was, uh, was much greater than anything I had felt before. It eroded my spirit, drained me of the willpower to bear the sight of the world after death. But rather than giving in to hatred like Morgana had, I despaired of myself. I didn't curse or bear a grudge against anyone. I prayed for my own extinguishment. My soul began to crumble. Neither ascending to heaven nor falling to hell, but fading into darkness everlasting. My fingers were the first to go, then my eyes, and then my mouth. All sound vanished into nothingness. My beating heart and all the emotions that had once taken root within it scattered like leaves upon the wind. My soul completely, wholly decomposed. I couldn't stand to allow my soul to return to the living world, no matter what it might take residence in. Some length of time later, I began to hear a sound, muffled and indistinct. No longer human in form, I had no ears to speak of, but the sound gradually increased in volume. It was a voice. Where are you, Michelle? What are you doing? I'm still praying. I'm still wishing for you to appear before me. Forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. I've been praying for so long. I don't even know how long it's been. Before you left, you said you were going to pray too. You said you hoped we could meet again in another life. I'm not misremembering, am I? Michelle, come back to me soon. As if drawn in by the sound of that voice, bit by bit, I began regaining some of what I, of what I had lost. But it took an incredibly long time. My body and soul had been ground to dust. I had rejected myself, scattered it into the void. It would take several lifetimes to find, find and reassemble all those pieces. Michelle, all I can remember about you is your name, your glassy white skin, your fiery red eyes, and your snow-colored hair. Nothing else. I thought my mind, my body, my spirit, and my heart had all been eradicated. But every time I heard that voice, I thought, I must return. Well, thought is perhaps inaccurate. It was not so much a con conscious idea as an instinctive force. The voice slowly buried the overwhelming pain I had suffered in both life and death. I began to search for the source of that quiet, constant whisper echo echoing in the emptiness. Chasing after that tiny fleck of light, the one thing in the world that seemed to desire my presence. Michelle, I am no longer the girl I once was. I built a thick cocoon around myself, a cocoon I can't break free of. My own protective shell is devouring me. I'm waiting for you, Michelle. Waiting for you inside my shell. Always waiting. Will you be able to recognize the person I become? Please, Michelle, get me out of here. At long, long last, I found the ray of light I sought. And I had an absolute certainty that if I followed it, I would reach the source of that voice. I had to find them. I had to set them free. I desperately had to give them, uh, give back to them what they had given to me. And that sense of purpose is what set me back into motion. But the void was so expansive, so endlessly deep, that reaching this end of the trail of light was no easy task. Struggling to follow it to its source, wore my barely held together soul thin, until it crumbled apart once more. Again and again I lost myself. I can't account for much of my time chasing after that light. The gaps in my memory are large and frequent. Nevertheless, after countless cycles of breaking down and reassembling myself, after hundreds of years of wandering, I finally found my way back to that mansion. And when the two of us had our long-awaited reunion, neither of us were our old selves anymore. In my endeavor to return, 
I had worn my soul down to almost nothing. I was but a vague shadow, completely devoid of memories. And that was the beginning. We met each other anew, lost and broken, devoid of life. Okay, so we are back in present time. And I think uh, I need to stand up for a bit. I need to blow my nose because I don't know what my nose is doing. Hi Seminet, welcome! It is dark and I'm just going for a short break. Don't go anywhere. I am just leaving for like about a minute or two. Uh, so stand up and stretch everyone. Uh, but don't uh, leave the stream, I will be back. <laughs> Okay, I am back. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna go to the store soon, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh wait, what am I doing? No, 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 no. Game, stop. Stop. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> it closes in one hour, so you have some time. Okay, that's good. Then you can join us in this wonderful bedtime story for a little while at least. Um... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it is part 22, so it might be a bit hard uh, to follow. Um, and also, Quill, thank you for recommending my bots. That's very kind of you. Uh, but yeah, I do recommend that if you're interested in what you're seeing here and want to know like the full story, definitely check out the bots because uh, just this part, uh, we're quite far in, and it's uh, it's not the easiest story to follow if you don't follow from the beginning. Uh, there are a lot of parts, so yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen a VOD in my life. I don't even have time to catch up with all the movies and shows I plan to watch and I have missed since like 10 years ago. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. No pressure at all. Just join and uh, relax and uh, if you feel like you don't understand anything, well, that's uh, completely understandable. <laughs> I'm just happy to have you here. <clears throat> but I feel you on that. I have way too many lists of everything uh, and uh, books in particular. Uh, I have like over 200 books on my list. <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> You've been perfect in the art of pretending you know what's going on and guessing stuff and content for like 20 years. Okay, perfect. <laughs> then you, then you will be able to put those skills to use here. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's read. The darkness here, 
reminds me of my time in the void, of the despair that filled my shattered soul as it sunk into the endless abyss, of the emptiness I felt as my body crumbled and faded into nothing. Michelle, the poor soul who was named for an angel and born with a curse, made to bear an unfairly cruel fate. I am the only one who sympathizes with you, the only one who understands your pain, the only one willing to help you. I'm sure you're not feeling particularly fond of me right now, not after I made you relive the past you so wanted to forget, every moment of that despair, not after I revealed your every last secret to the woman you love, but you must face the truth my dear. You put your life, your very soul, on the line for this woman, and even she would not accept you. But as I have said before, that's the normal response. She's no worse than anyone else for it. You simply aren't something people can accept. You believe that even if your family wouldn't, that even if your dear brothers wouldn't, Giselle would be able to accept you for you. That she alone was different, that she alone was special, that she alone wanted you in her life, that she alone would extend her hand for you. You never doubted that, did you? But Michelle, hope exists to be crushed, and the stronger you cling to that hope, the more you have to lose. You can hear that, can't you? Her mocking you, scorning you. Rejecting everything that defines you. The revulsion in her voice. This is the woman you fought so hard to get back. Listen to it, my dear. Focus on her voice. <clears throat> Disgusting. Stop. Please. I don't want to hear it anymore. Make it stop. Can you blame her though? For hundreds of years she waited, trusting you, and you came back to her a woman more than once. If you think about it, you betrayed her first. Uh, uh, no, stop. Don't. I... I didn't. Tell me, what was it like? How did it feel to be born and live as a woman? You spent your life insisting you weren't a woman, and yet your soul shows a female body to return in. All those gaps in your memory were from your lives as the white-haired girl. Ah... Uh, ah... Uh, ah... Uh. First, it was a kind, mild-mannered, flaxen-haired boy. You, a woman, and he, a man, were joined in love. Uh, uh, uh. And then there was the deranged man-beast. By exposing your female body to him, you were able to temporarily contain his madness. Ah! Uh, uh, uh. And finally, there was the man obsessed with money and power. You were his wife, ever faithful, waiting patiently for him to remember his love. Uh, uh. You put your faith in the wrong person's love. Uh. How can you expect her not to be disgusted? She was forced to watch again and again as the man she loved was reborn as a woman and had relations with other men. Would you like to know what you're doing right this, right this moment, Michelle? You're crying. Crying as you have done so many times before. Those tears, they wash away your dignity. Would you also like to know how you look like right now, Michelle? You reverted to your final moments, both in body and in heart. Take a look at yourself, my dear. 
your body, incomplete, only partially made. The wounds, still fresh and raw, pierced by your brother, whom you trusted completely, and the knights whose ranks you dreamed of joining. Even now, your blood still flows from those wounds. They will never heal. Not so long as you remain yourself. <sighs> Michelle. Uh, uh, uh. It's not pleasant, is it? It hurts quite a bit, doesn't it? I did not inflict those wounds on you, though. They are your own, and no one can erase them. You've lost everything, Michelle. Tell me, what do you have left? You were robbed of your pride, your dignity, your life your identity, your very existence, and the love you thought you still had. Well, she's gone and left you behind too. <clears throat> and still you refuse to curse anyone. <clears throat> Why do you not take what you deserve from those who stole everything from you? You have every right to vengeance, and I'm offering you the means to have it. Curse them, my dear. I cannot curse anyone. You disappoint me, Michelle. But if that's what you want, if you won't join, won't join me in my hatred, then so be it. I will accept we are not as similar as, as, similar as I once thought. And as much as it pains me to do so, I will release you. I will even wish for your reconstruction into the body you desire. I shall descend into the mortal realm. You shall descend into the mortal realm as a human man, never to set foot in this cursed mansion again. Imagine it. After waiting for so long, you will finally be able to obtain the body you so desperately seek. To have a wife and create a happy family of your own. Wouldn't that be just lovely? I'll make that wish for you, my dear. You can have that life. All you have to do is walk out the door. It's that easy. Just let go. Let it all go, Michelle. I... 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 No, 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 no. Don't listen to her! Don't trust anything she says. Don't trust anything she shows you. Michelle! You told me you believed in my love. That if I could, that if it could survive for hundreds of years, it must be real. So don't start doubting it now. The music. Open your eyes, Michelle, and look at me. Listen to me, please. Listen to the sound of my voice. Michelle. Will you listen to what I really think? How I actually feel? I would never, ever push you away. Do you remember what I said, Michelle? When you broke through the cocoon I had built around myself? I said that I would never come to hate you. I still stand by that. My feelings haven't changed in the slightest. It doesn't matter what kind of past you had, or what kind of secrets you kept. I still love you. You accepted me, Michelle. I spent hundreds of years trapped in this place, watching as tragedy after tragedy befell its residents. Slowly losing my grip on myself until I had been twisted so far I could tell him like stories with a cold smile on my face. And despite what I had become, you still took my hand. You still said you loved me. No matter what horrors you have, you've experienced, I will always and forever take your hand. Michelle! Giselle. 
Please have faith in me, Michelle. Don't believe what some illusion says. Believe me. Believe the real me. You have it backwards, Giselle. The truth is, I never once doubted you. What? I never doubted your love. Michelle. I... I despised myself. I hated that I was so weak, I couldn't even bear being rejected by a phantasm made to look like you. I didn't want you to see me like that. I didn't want you to know I was so weak. To see my past. To see me now, a pitiful, unsightly mess. I couldn't stand the thought of you seeing any of that. If only in your memories, if only for you, I wanted to be gallant, to be a man. I wanted to be the man who never cried, who never showed weakness, and who died trying to protect you. I didn't want... I didn't want you to know that I was so weak, that I was such a sad, frail person. And not even a real man. Michelle. I didn't want you to see that. Morgana was telling the truth. I opened the door to our past in order to bring you back. But that wasn't the whole story. I kept details about myself out. Things that would make me look bad. There's no one as shameful as and reprehensible as me. No, Michelle. There's no one in this world as admirable as you. You remained true to yourself to the end, no matter how bad things got. Day after day you fought, all alone, despite being put through hell. Yet you chose not to curse those rep responsible. Only once did you ever consider cursing someone, your father. I remember that day very well. I was too stupid to realize it at the time, but you... You did that for me. The one time you ever wanted to curse someone was for me. Give yourself a little more credit. You did, perhaps, come up uh, as a bit inscrutable. But deep down, you're truer to yourself than anyone. Your motivation simple and pure. Your heart full of kindness. Know that you're a wonderful, admirable man, you said, me said, uh, <laughs> I can't read. Admirable man, Michelle. Be proud of who you are. That doesn't change how much suffering I put you through, Giselle. <clears throat> the game looks very interesting, but also be on my faking knowing what's going on skills, and I'm worried if I pay too much attention now I might just spoil myself for when I decide to watch it from. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, go go to go to the store. That that's a good plan. Uh, don't spoil yourself any further. <laughs> yeah, just said it's an admirable man now. <laughs> Their names are very similar. <laughs> Can you blame me? <laughs> when you say the names many multiple times, it uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't read. Okay. Yeah, save journey seven. <clears throat> I, I was, I was the, the white haired girl. The girl in the portrait was me. It was all me. I came back more than once, showing up a woman then disappearing again, hurting you completely unaware, pushing you away, leaving nothing but tragedy in my wake. I'll never forgive myself. For what I did to you. Have faith in yourself, Michelle. Follow your heart. I know it was a secret you didn't want revealed. But for me, I couldn't be happier to know the truth. Because it shows just how incredibly much you love me. And not only in life. The hundreds of years I spent trapped in this mansion. You spent 
you spent searching for me. In that vast, empty, hopeless void, you heard my voice. Your love guided you to me. When you had lost everything, your love for me still lived on. Even as it tore you apart, you kept fighting to make it back to me. A few blanks in your memory don't account for how someone so fiercely determined could suddenly become a completely different person. But, Giselle, I... How am I supposed to believe that? How am I supposed to believe that wasn't me? When everything about us is exactly the same. You are not the white hair girl, Michelle. Have faith in your own heart and the things you stand for. Have faith in your true self. In the person you are. The shape of your soul. You were never the white hair girl, and you never will be. Remember when you first arrived at the mansion, Michelle? I took your hand, and together we watched dozens of different lives play out. Were your memories anywhere among them? It wasn't behind those doors that you found yourself, but in the remnants of the months we shared here. Was the white haired girl anywhere in your memories? You are Michelle. No one else. But that doesn't change what my body. I know you, Michelle. I know who you are deep down. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I want you to understand that. To know how I feel. Though we only shared our love for a month in life, it was enough for me to wait hundreds of years for your return. And you fought with everything you had to make it back to me. To get me out of here. You are the greatest man I have ever known. Giselle. How is it? You always manage to see straight through me, Giselle. To give me exactly what I want. That smile. That single ray of light in the endless dark. To say exactly what I have so desperately yearned to hear. The words I sought for countless years. Giselle! I reached out for her, but she has begun to fade, her outline hazy and blending into the surroundings, and all I managed to grab is empty air. I want more than anything to feel a warm fright now, the sensation of a skin against mine, but there's nothing there. Please, Giselle, don't leave my side again. Don't worry. I'm right here with you. I'm not going anywhere. Giselle, put your hands on my shoulders. Wrap your arms around me. I can't. I want to so much, but I can't feel you there at all. You can, Michelle. I promise. Close your eyes. Now reach forward slowly. You can feel me there, can't you? That's my finger. And that's my hair. Those are my eyes. And here are my lips. Here's my heart, where I keep all the feelings you gave back to me. And my love for you. In body and in spirit, I am all yours. Can you sense me here beside you? I... I think I can. Now, hold on and don't let go. You know, it's kind of funny. We like two awkward kids around each other, bound together by a love so amazingly powerful, yet we only ever held hands a few times, and embracing is like some incredible achievement for us. <laughs> and we're supposed to be full grown adults. Kiss me, Michelle. We never got the chance while we were alive. Giselle. Or are you going to tell me to wait again? Not this time. I feel my way around the emptiness where she is. Her skin, white but not pallid. Her slightly flushed cheeks, dimpled by her smile. Her lips, which at times call me Master, and at times call me Michelle. Her entire being... This woman, who accepted me as a man, who, even in death, 
continue to bring me back from my darkest places. She is my everything. I feel a faint breath against my neck, somewhere between a sigh and a giggle. I feel her warmth, which I thought I would never know again, the soft touch of her skin. I envision her face before me, where I'm sure she is, with her eyes closed, and I press my lips against hers. It's a quick, clumsy affair, just a little peck, not the kind of kiss two grown adults might be expected to share. But nonetheless, a gentle warmth spread through my body from the place our lips touched. It's a sensation so pleasant, so nice, I can hardly believe it's real. Our surroundings dissolve, and the world takes on a new face, a plane of tranquil light created by Isel, into which the mansion's darkness slowly seeps. The difference is, now I'm not afraid to step back into it. All it took was that single irreplaceable moment to change my everything. Though I can't see her there, I can feel her presence right beside me, her heart, and that she too can feel mine. I won't falter anymore. I'm through hesitating, wavering about in fear of my own weakness. I will look to the future. I will believe in myself, because she believes in me. I'm done carrying the chains I created for myself. I have work to do. No more looking away from my responsibility. As the light dims and darkness begins to take over, I hear her voice in my ear. Michelle, can I ask you to lend your hand to someone? You set me free. And now I'd like you to do the same for her. This is something I don't think anyone else can do. Only you can rid the mansion of its darkness. I'm here with you too, so let's open the final door together. The true final door. We can put an end to all this tragedy. I know we can. Now, off we go, Michelle. And do not let go of my hand. Cell. Reality fades back into view. I'm looking at neither the endless road in darkness nor the visions of my past, but a sea of blood spreading in all directions. You're scared now that we had a few moments of happiness? Yeah, <laughs> but we have Cell on our side now, so I think we're gonna be fine. We are stronger than ever. I'm standing at the top of the observation tower, outside the door. I've returned. Back in Morgana's world, her bitter, hate-filled, curse-fueled world. To tell you the truth, I didn't see this coming. This is my mansion. My domain. She was supposed to be locked up. But it would seem my will is not as absolute as I had thought. What would you call that? The power of love? Is that what allowed this to happen? Is this story capable of happiness? Yeah, it is. I mean, we did have happiness when, uh, way back when. <laughs> like, way back, but yeah. <laughs> as long as we have Giselle with us, we're fine. How trite. Where's the magic? The miracle? And because this story is so dark and sad most of the time, those few spread out moments of happiness are more impactful, I feel like. So, yeah. Many precious moments of happiness, exactly, Quill. I can think of one other reason she was able to escape. And it's the only way we'll be able to find the power we need to cast off the darkness of this house. But first, before we do anything else, we must open this door. Whatever nonsense that women filled your hand with. Hand? What? Lolly! My god, do you have dyslexia or something? I, I, I'm rereading that. <laughs> Whatever nonsense that woman filled your head with, it certainly seems to have put some fight into those eyes. 
Well, good for you, my dear. A little confidence boost doesn't erase the fact that you were on the ground, crawling through the filth like a worm, tears streaming down your face as you tried to ignore what lay before you. A little self-esteem isn't going to make you any less helpless when you step through that door. But that won't stop me from trying. I'm done acting like you're some inevitability, some force of nature. It's time for me to take a stand, Morgana. <laughs> Michelle's brain is in his ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> no comment on that. <laughs> <clears throat> The, the air around the door has a distinct shield to it as I place my hand against the wood surface. My arms, once bloody and la lacerated, are now whole again. I can feel my entire body, everything back in its rightful place. I take in a breath, lift my head, focus my gaze on the door, and push it open. <laughs> yeah, at least he's not thinking with his other head. That's very true. Resting on the back of my hand, I can feel another palm, soft and warm. Through the single window sitting high atop the wall shines a ray of light. A black butterfly flutters within the beam. Its form is indistinct, wavering like a mirage as it slowly descends into the towered floor. And then, from within the darkness, a person appears. Is that you, Morgana? How does it feel to find me the real thing, my dear? I knew you were young, but you really are still a child. Having heard her tale, I know she died still a girl. And I know how she became to bear so much hatred for the world. But knowing and seeing are two very different things. The sight of her bony, adolescent body is a painful reminder that she never had a chance to know happiness, to know adulthood, before being robbed of her life. I had assumed monster would be your first reaction. With a face. And a body like this. Yeah, her... Our outfit is absolutely enviable. Yeah, it's gorgeous. How very sweet of you, Michelle. So tell me, what exactly do you mean to do now that you're here? Your ultimate goal was, as I understood it, to take Giselle back. But she's no longer here for me to return to you. She broke out of my cage and exhausted what remained of her soul to show herself to you. I cannot perceive even a trace of her presence any longer, so I presume her soul shattered, dissipated into nothing. No, she's right here beside me. Is that so? You seem to believe as much anyway, which only makes your presence here a bigger mystery. Ah, I know. You want revenge. I made you miserable while you were alive. And I continue to torment you in death. You entrusted me with Giselle's life and I used her for my own ends. You must despise me. You also adore her butterfly brooch? Yeah, it's very pretty. <laughs> Hatred fills you. You want to curse me, to kill me. My death could well mean the end of all this. Shall I grant you that wish? She flicks a finger, and the next second, a long sword clatters to the floor at my feet. Take the blade in your hands, and like the knight of old who executed the witch, pierce my heart with it. Do now what should have happened then. You always wanted to be a knight, didn't you? Go on, pick it up. Show me your revulsion, my dear. Morgana. I do have a reason for being here. I came to save you. 
<clears throat> you don't think you fancy a skeletal hand? Uh, <laughs> makes it look murdery. Yeah, yeah, true. I kind of like it though. I think it's, I think it's a cool design. And it also like shows, like how cruel her fate was really. Uh, more than if she would have a normal arm. Did you hit your head on the way up? You came to save who? I spent so long trying to look away, when I should have been trying to look deeper. To tell you the truth, your constant shattering in the darkness evoked more than annoyance in me. I empathized with your loneliness. I bear no hatred for you. It was my despair that brought you back to life. So that makes it my responsibility to end this. My own wish has given me all the redemption I need, my dear. Or should I be expecting another self-righteous lecture about how hatred does you no good? Brilliant, Michelle. Brilliant. Do you have any idea how absurdly presumptuous you are being? Trying to force your idea of redemption onto someone who has no interest in it. If the tale you showed me was the whole truth, then I would have said you could revile those heartless men as much as you pleased. But I refuse to believe that's the whole story. The men I saw beyond the first three doors had genuine concerns and worries. They felt things, real human emotions, even if those things ultimately led them down a path of destruction. Wanting to do something nice for the one you care about, being disgusted at the things you've done, hiding a true your urges from those around you. You certainly couldn't call them good men, but they were real people with real conflicts. So you're saying I'm lying? Well, I can't say I blame you. Who would believe the word of a witch? I don't think you falsified your account, Magana. The tragedy? No. The grisly reality you describe? I don't doubt any of that happened. You wouldn't be here otherwise. But I've learned something in my years. Reality exists from more than one perspective. Yeah, that's Morgana. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, she she is uh, friendly in her own way, I would say. That doesn't change what happened. That two-faced young man deceived me. The beast severed my arm. And the greedy, power-hungry lord used me for his own personal gain. Events by themselves do not tell the whole story. Only when you take into account their circumstances, what they thought and felt, their perspectives, only then can you say you reach the truth. Your point being? Are you going to march down to where the souls are and ask them for their perspective? Don't waste your breath. They'll only tell you what benefits themselves the most. Then we do it our way. We open the door to your past. And if I refuse? This is my domain. My world. It operates in accordance with my will. The door won't open unless I allow it to. Were you aware, Morgana, that I recovered my first memory in front of a mirror? You what? Her appearance makes much more sense when you watch uh, through things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and despite her terrifying feature, there's also a bit of delicate mischief to it too. Yeah, <laughs> she's kind of cute actually. She she tries to like look terrifying and I mean, sure, she definitely isn't like your standard uh, image of beautiful, but... Uh, she she's using all those like terrifying things of uh, those terrifying parts of her body to seem more scared than she actually is because as Michelle said she died very young she was sixteen when she died and she never got to live her life she was sold off how old was she when she was sold as a slave like nine so she she has a reason to be the way she is but. Uh, yeah, she's not as 
quote unquote terrifying as she looks. Uh, she's actually um, not faking it, I would say, but uh, yeah. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <clears throat> The same mirror Giselle used to practice her smile. And in all those hundreds of years, bits of her memory came to reside within it. Every time she stood before that mirror, she had me in her heart. And next, I saw one of my own memories play out in my bedchamber. It was the first day after we opened the windows, when she had let the morning sun into my room. Yeah, <laughs> she doesn't actually look terrifying, maybe a little bit like she wants to kill you. Yeah, she probably would want to kill you, <laughs> depending on who you are. <clears throat> uh, then again, I know myself for, for years, can't really blame anyone. Oh, don't say that, don't say that. I don't think it would be that bad. We're always our own biggest critics. <clears throat> Her mother's nation mainly sells this to a specific group of people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Specifically three people in her life. That day was a turning point in my life. And why are you telling me this? Because it means this world doesn't belong only to you. It's also hers. And mine. And that is why she was able to break free. Your wish is, without question, the most powerful of anyone's here, and you have more authority over this place than anyone else. There is no denying your position as master of this mansion. But Giselle and I, we too have influence over this domain. I was the one who resurrected you, and she who served as your guide. So the door will appear, whether or not it is your will. Their souls reside here as well. They may, may spin convenient tales, but the memories engraved upon their souls can tell no lies. All the pieces are on the board. The door will open. Say the door does open. What does that change? Nothing those men may have thought or felt can take back what they did to me. This rotting, broken creature they turned me into. I don't care what was going through their heads. They will never have my forgiveness. My hatred is unwavering. My wish will not be undone so easily. Their souls shall suffer for all eternity. Before we begin Morgana, let's get one last lingering question out of the way. She may want to change her diet. Yeah, she do be kind of dead, you know. <laughs> Otherwise it would be concerning. And what might that be? Who the white hair girl is? That's your lingering question? We already established. That was you, Morgana. In a desperate plea to deny you came back as a woman, you're now trying to make me into her. That is perhaps the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <clears throat> that was you, my dear. Don't avert your eyes. You must face reality. <clears throat> you think your skin complexion is not healthy? <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah, it's not healthy. Um. <laughs> My manic laughing is scarily convincing. Well, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> you mean not everyone can uh, laugh like a maniac on, on Will? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not aversing my eyes, and I'm not in denial. I have faith. Faith that only I, I that I only ever made it back to this mansion once, when I awoke in the rocking chair beside the fireplace. 
Ha! Nevertheless, that hardly justifies accusing me of being that foolish girl. How could you possibly think I was her? Never have I not been present in these walls. Not even while she was alive and in the class of tragedy. My hair is not white, nor are my eyes red. And look at this horrid festering face. How could I ever become her? How your soul appears is irrelevant in this case, Morgana. I will uncover the truth about you. Things even you don't know. And if I can show you that you were, in fact, the white-haired girl, in that moment will your reality be rewritten. If you're so confident, then be my guest. Find out for yourself just how little you're capable of. Blackness fills the observation tower once more. Morgana fades into the distance, leaving me alone in the dark stream. It's a darkness I've seen, felt and been consumed by numerous times since arriving at the mansion. But this time, I welcome it, praying that beyond it, li that beyond it lies a truth with the, the power to release all from the house's grip. This next tale has no na narrator. I won't sit back and listen as someone recounts the path of faith for me. No, I have to find a path for myself this time. I don't know what awaits me beyond the black, but no matter what it may be, so long as I have the power to provide redemption, I must never put down my sword. Now, let us open the door. The final door. Her expressions actually sometimes remind me of Michelle. Yeah, maybe. I haven't really thought about it, but uh, yeah. Okay, but uh, we have uh, officially opened the final door, so I'm gonna end it there because I think that's a perfect way to start next time. Um, so let me change the screen. <clears throat> As someone who doesn't understand what's going on, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out they're all three different aspects of the same person. That would be a twist, I assume. Yeah, that could be quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> And um, I feel like it, it, could, it can be even more interesting to speculate even if you don't know what's going on sometimes because you don't have all the other, other uh, pieces so you're more free in your mind in a way. <laughs> yeah, thank you to Quill for being here. It has been lovely. And I uh, can't believe that we have... Uh, Finally reached the final door. We are getting close to the end. This is gonna be a long one, I can tell you. So we have a few streams uh, more of uh, the main game um, before it's over, but we're getting there. We are getting there. <laughs> Thank you for streaming. It was confusing, but also fun. Your voice acting is really good. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> and you love my new house? Yeah, I love my new house too. It's much more comfy than the purple void that I had before. I mean, purple void is nice. It was purple, but uh, yeah, I have a library now, so I'm happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we have a few more streams of the main game, as I said, because the final door is a lengthy one. Uh, and I will probably have to think of my my layout because I will not be able to... <laughs> you like my head wiggles? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I will not be able to sit in the corner because uh, actually, small spoiler, but Michelle's face is going to be down in the corner so I need to think of where I want to sit. Uh, yes, I have played the game before. It's uh, my absolute favorite game and story ever, so I don't know uh, which number this is, but it's like maybe fourth or fifth time I'm playing it, I think. Something like that. Um, I, I felt like since uh, this was the first game I started streaming, 
uh, started streaming it in January, so it's been going on for a while. Um, and I, I sort of, I wanted to read the story again, and I thought since I was going to start streaming by then, I felt like, okay, but le let's make it comfortable for me because uh, streaming is very, it's very strange because <laughs> I, uh, I'm not uh, someone who likes to talk in front of people normally. Uh, streaming is very scary, so I wanted it to be like comfortable, and I felt like. Okay, but reading my favorite story might be that for me, so it's sort of my comfort streams, uh, you know. Um, no, I have not considered making my own uh, visual novel. Um, I think that's... Uh, or I have like thought about it, but I feel like it's uh, such a different kind of writing than what I'm used to. I mean... Maybe if I did it like uh, this game, because this is more a pure story, it's not full of like a lot of choices and stuff. Uh, but um, I would need to find someone to draw for me. I can't draw, so <laughs> I think it's just easier to write uh, normal books um, for me, actually. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> hmm. It feels like I was going to say something, but it slipped my mind. Um, so maybe it wasn't something important, or if it was, I, I will say it later. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, tomorrow uh, I will stream at uh, 16, 15 GMT plus 2. Uh, I will stream um, Final Fantasy 7. Sorry, that was my cat. <laughs> uh, he scared me. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. And then on uh, Sunday I will hold a writing stream. So if you are interested in joining me for that, uh, you are very welcome. Um. <laughs> yeah, he's, I need to uh, cut his cloth, but he's, he's like getting stuck on my carpet. So I'm gonna go do that right after this. <laughs> Poor thing. <clears throat> I think we'll, we'll get to see P guy again. I think P guy might die in, uh, tomorrow, actually. Or, or maybe he gets away, I don't know, but uh, I, I don't think, I don't hope we will see P guy again. <laughs> ah, the curse of P guy. <clears throat> Spoiler! <laughs> I don't know if he dies. I have no idea, uh, actually. It's just a hunch, really. So don't worry, I wouldn't spoil. Um, but yeah, those are my plans for the week. So Final Fantasy VII tomorrow and then a writing stream on Sunday. And that will be at, let's see, it will be 13 GMT plus 2. Uh, so if you have something you you're writing on or if you just want to listen to like me rambling about writing and then clicking on my keyboard uh, then you're very welcome to join so yeah oh wow look at the time it's time for me to go to bed i need to work tomorrow <laughs> this has been lovely thank you so much for being here everyone it's uh, been great i love doing these streams with you guys uh, i hope you have enjoyed too um Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, good night.